Well, good afternoon, folks, and welcome to Superior Livestock and Superior Productions' next stop auction block. I'm Katie Kaufman, and alongside of me, as always, is the manager of our purebred division here at Superior Productions, Mr. Jason Barber. And I feel like every time we sit down to shoot auction block, you've been on an airplane and I've been on an airplane, and we're finally just getting back to the office. But, man, it's been a crazy summer. It has. I really feel like I've lived out of a suitcase since the end of May and uh, been somewhere out of state every single week. But... We're finally both back in Fort Worth for the first time. Yeah, absolutely. You are just getting off the plane from, from where? Tell me where you've been and what you've been doing. Well, actually, I drove, I just got back from the Hereford Junior Nationals. It was in Grand Island, Nebraska. And if you see the RFD TV magazine, they're going to be broadcasting the Nebraska State Fair. And it's actually at the same facility there. They just moved it from Omaha back to Grand Island, Nebraska. Okay. And reading Patrick Gotch's letter in there, a big key uh, element on the reason behind moving it back there is so they could get some of the tradition from being back from a country town. Um, but really great facility, had a good time out there. It was yeah. definitely a little warm. I got to see my niece and nephew show some cattle. And it's always fun to get out to these Hereford Junior Nationals and these cattle shows and see family and friends and really enjoyed it. But I actually drove up there. It was about a 10 and a half hour drive. Oh. And Normally, I wouldn't drive that far, but the six weeks prior to that, I had flown in and out somewhere every single week. So it was actually kind of nice to just <laughs> drive through the countryside. Yeah, and your niece and nephew did well, and you said that um, there were some other Barber Ranch cattle there. There, there were. Uh, a lot of our customers were there, and they showed cattle, and for the most part, it was a pretty successful week. Good. I should have worn my Barber hat. Every time I, we talk about you, I forget to bring it in here. You could be representing if you had it. <laughs> Well, I just got off the plane yesterday from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Um, I had the opportunity to go up there for the 100th anniversary of the Calgary Stampede. Uh, I went along uh, also with rural TV reporter Courtney Dehoff and then cameraman uh, and videographer Chris Greenwood. We had a great, great time. Courtney covered um, a lot of the rodeo that she's going to be playing on rural mm -hmm. TV, but I had the opportunity to cover all things draft horses, you know, the new program that Pam and I are producing and hosting. It's going to air um, beginning in January, but it's all about gentle giants. And will that be on RFD? It'll be on RFD TV. And um, I have to tell you, I've never been around heavy horses growing up. You know, I was raised on a quarter horse, showed quarter horses, etc. But um, since I've gotten into this draft horse community just a little bit, they've been so accepting and they're so excited about the show. But these horses, they're the most majestic animals I have ever been around. And to be there, at the World Champion Six Horse Hitch competition was so incredible. Yeah. As long as they don't step on your tail, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I'm, I, I can't believe, you know, they're just, they're, they're so beautiful. And um, I got to meet, like I said, so many outfits that um, have such a passion for heavy horses. But um, on a different note, also, like Courtney, she was reporting uh, for the rodeo. And um, I had a lot of friends that were competing that I hadn't seen in a few years. And my uh, best friend, Chet Johnson, he's a saddle bronc rider. Yeah, I met him at Denver, the oh, National yeah. Western. Yeah, that's right. He was up there for that rodeo. But um, he, was, he was there and he was in Pool A, which um, all of the contestants for the Calgary Stampede have to be invited by the Stampede. You can't, you can't um, just interrupt. So he's been invited the last, I think he's been there the last 10 years. Uh, but he's from Sheridan, Wyoming, NFR qualifier. Uh, he just won San Antonio this year. But I was so excited because while I was there, he was up in Pool A, which uh, is the first four days of the performance, and he won all three rounds while really? I was there. So that is so That's awesome. awesome. Yeah, I packed away $16,000, and he's going to go back to the final round on Sunday. And uh, Calgary Stampede, the CBC Sports uh, for Canada, they own all the rights to the rodeo. Uh, they broadcast it as if it is the Super Bowl. I mean, really? their coverage is insane, but to be um, at one of the greatest rodeos truly in the world, and then for Chet to, to win as much as he did, I was on cloud nine, but I will tell you that all the locals there, they said it usually reaches about 75 degrees, you know, and it's mm -hmm. really cool at night. Oh, I couldn't get away from the heat because it was 90. It was hot where I was at, too. I know, it was so warm, and I, uh, we'll stop talking about Calgary, but like I said, this was my first time ever going, so I really didn't know what to expect. Um, it was an event to get to the event. I mean, this place is so huge. 
Uh, but on top of that, they actually had to close the entire park down on Friday night um, because they exceeded their capacity. First time in the history of the Calgary Stampede. And just to put a little bit of it in perspective, the rodeo grounds in general holds 20,000 people and it's sold out for all 10 days really? of the rodeo. Now, you were telling me earlier that you also ran into uh, one of our clients up there. Yes, too. yes. Well, Express Ranches was there um, because they have the Express Clyde sales, which I know you've got some footage for, for mm -hmm. Pam and I. Uh, but uh, also, along with Josh Mitchell, who's the manager of the Clyde sale division, uh, Mr. Bob Funk was there. And so I got to catch up with him and visit with him all about uh, the Clyde sales. And they're truly the ambassadors and the mascot for Express Personnel, mm -hmm. his, his company. And I did ask him if he would let us uh, come up to the ranch and, and film more of uh, the Clyde sales. And he, he opened the gates with open arms. Good. So, yeah. And I told him that we'll be there in August for his big event. Okay. Yeah. Are well, you, are, will you be there? I'll definitely be there. <laughs> definitely be there. Which, you know, will be a little more focused on Angus cattle that time. But. Right, right. Well, they let me uh, They let me sit on a wagon. They let me do all kinds of stuff. Jackson Pork Ranch, they were also there. A huge, big outfit in Wyoming. And Pam and I are actually getting on a plane next week to go to Jackson Hole to film that. But Now, how many more places do you have lined up coming up soon to go video draft horses? Well, uh, like I said, Pam and I are we're getting actually on a, on, a, on a plane on Monday morning. We're going to go to Jackson Hole and shoot there for a couple days, which I've never been to Jackson Hole. So I'm really excited. This whole draft horse thing has just taken my travels to a whole new level, which is really exciting. Well, <laughs> and you're saying earlier, you'll be the talent on these shows with right. Pam, but you're also going to be the person running the camera and doing a lot of the, the actual video work. I am. I am. Golly, I hope I hit record, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hope so. Oh, but so uh, we'll be in Jackson Hole and then I come home for two days and then you and I are, uh, and the rest of the crew here, we're off to Winnemucca, mm -hmm. Nevada. Yep. Sorry to say I'm not going to be up there the entire week. I know. Uh, like the rest of y'all are this time. I'm going to fly up Wednesday, get there in time to go play some golf, yeah. be there Thursday night for the dinner. But I've also got clients coming up yeah. there too and then I'll head back Friday. Yeah, well, I think a little later in the show, we're going to talk about mm -hmm. uh, who we're going to wrangler up to get some interviews, huh? That's right. All right, well, good. Well, when we come back from this commercial break, folks, we're going to talk a little bit more about Steamboat Springs, Week in the Rockies, and all the great, great people, new friends, and old customers that we got to visit with when we come back. Stay with us. <laughs> Express Ranches, located in Yukon, Oklahoma, is ranked as the largest seed stock producer in the United States by the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. Express Ranches currently has five production sales year-round, along with an annual replacement female sale partnering with Superior Livestock Auction during Express's big event. Let Express be your destination for your next herd sire or foundation female. Call Express today for more information and we'll see you at the next sale. Welcome back. Like we said, uh, Week in the Rockies was nothing short of fun. I can tell you that we had a great time up there in Steamboat Springs, but um, it was a little sad and it was actually really kind of hard to swallow knowing that there were so many fires burning in Colorado during that time. Um, it was just complete devastation. Yeah, it was surprising flying into Denver. I mean, you didn't you didn't see the flames anywhere, but you right. sure saw the haze from the smoke. Yeah, it was just so. Oh, it's just. And and we had we actually had a guest on the show uh, from Spruce Mountain Ranch right. that had to leave because the fires were getting so close to his place they were having to go evacuate cattle. Yeah, yeah. So we interviewed mm -hmm. him first. And there was lots out of the cell all week that were being scratched too because of the wildfires. Right. Yeah. I mean, it was so devastating and just the amount of impact that it had. I mean, it was really a national disaster up there, so that was really tough. And in saying that, it was also really warm. We flew into Denver, and it was like 102, and I thought, geez, Louise, I thought we were going to be able to get away from this heat. Well, it never let up. It was warm all week there. Well, we talked about on the show all spring about how we love to go to Steamboat because yeah. it's cool, and it really wasn't this year. <laughs> it wasn't cool at all, but I will tell you. Uh, that during the Steamboat Springs, as many of you well know, it's our Superior Livestock Representative Awards. Uh, it's Thursday night. We have a great steak dinner for all of our customers and friends. And then we also have presentations of all kinds of awards for our reps from the 10,000 Head Club, which means selling 10,000 head of cattle for the calendar year, 15,000, 25,000, 30,000. We only had two reps that hit over the 30,000 head mark, and that was Mr. Jim Davis, as well as Barrett Brody. Barrett Brody mm -hmm. was the representative of the year last year, and he came out on top again this year. Mm -hmm. He's from Kansas. 
His uh, father, Bill Brody, is the founder of the All-American Beef Battalion, as well as a longtime founding father, uh, founding rep of Superior Livestock. But to present Barrett with that award again was really awesome. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, really, it was neat seeing all the reps there and seeing how many cattle they'd sold and see them get the awards. It was also neat this year, uh, <clears throat> unique from uh, last year, the years previous, uh, Jim Odell got an award for being there. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, his leadership and everything with the company. And uh, Joe Lichty did, as well right. as Mitch Hickey and Mona Whaler from our brush office. Right. So, of course, we got to listen to Clyde give a 15-minute long speech <laughs> on the history of the gun they gave out to right. some of the reps there. Right, yeah, the rifles. So, uh, in addition to representative of the year, we also come in um, and are elated to give out 250,000 headcount awards as well as 500,000 headcount. So this year the 250,000 uh, dollar, or I said that last time, 250,000 headcount were um, uh, Maitland Webb and mm -hmm. Tom Bornhoff. In their career with Superior, they've sold or they've consigned 250,000 head of cattle. That's like, you can't even hardly wrap right. your brain around that. That's right. Know? And they're the ones that got like, guns, right? And, uh, no, they got saddles. They got saddles. Yeah, they then, got uh, custom Martin saddlery saddles with Superior Livestock Auction logos all over them. Beautiful saddles. And then Rayburn Smith and Howard Hawks. For 500,000 head. 500,000 head were given really awesome rifles that were inscribed with Superior Livestock Auction. And uh, like you said, Clyde Whittle. Uh, the voice of Superior and our senior editor here for all the commercial cattle presented those uh, mm -hmm. to them, and that was really cool. Well, it was it was funny because Clyde gives the whole history of the gun and talks yeah. about it in the John Wayne movies yeah. and, and all this, and uh, he was very honored afterwards because right after <clears throat> after they gave those two guys the gun, they turned around and said, "Clyde, you've been the one that's edited all these cattle," and they yeah. gave him again too. Well, so. Clyde has been with us, and I didn't know this. You know, I'm fairly new. I've only been here a year and a half, but Clyde has been here. 30 years, uh, you know, even before up in Amarillo, he was with with the company. Um, he has edited, they counted out, or they tallied at over 38 million head of cattle. That's a lot. That is a lot. Can you, I can't even wrap my brain around no, that. So we, we want to come in and just thank Clyde Whittle for everything he does here for Superior Livestock. He is truly uh, not only the voice, but he's a real pillar to our to our company and then his wife Donna she's sure. our um, one of our secretaries downstairs and we just adore her too so the rep awards were uh, were something to be remembered that's sure. for sure so uh, I guess now that we've talked about the rep <laughs> awards we can talk about the actual sale that week yeah. and uh, you know it was up and down a little bit Monday and Tuesday uh, the first two days of steamboat were definitely down a little bit uh, of course corn prices were so high that week too that that was affecting the market and uh, but really, it bounced back on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for the Sweet. most part was, was pretty good. I actually had uh, a buddy of mine, I was a groomsman in his wedding, he's a groomsman of mine, but uh -huh. his family was selling cattle on Friday. And most of the week at Steamboat, I, when I wasn't visiting with our clients and our seaside people, I was actually working the bed line and you know, trying to get cattle bought for our buyers and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, my buddy's dad and his family were up there and uh, they had cattle selling on Friday. And I told him that I would go up there and see if we couldn't get some buyers for him. And actually had a guy on the phone. Uh, he called in. It was a random call. I, I took it there on the bid line. And uh, he was looking at some cattle coming up. I said, really? I said, well, these people are like our neighbors. They're really, they're from New Mexico. They're about 45, 50 miles away from my family's ranch. But up at the Panhandle, that's almost like your neighbors. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but he called in. It turns out I knew him from college. Uh, he livestock judge that came to the state with uh, my buddy, Kyle Perez, his family. And Anyway, uh, they sold like five and a quarter weight cattle for a dollar seventy-five, which was definitely pretty good. The only thing that like surprised me about it, looking in the catalog, the cattle were uh, listed as being located in South Dakota, and uh, that's, I kind of <laughs> had that look too. But uh, I saw Kyle Perez uh, at Hereford Junior Nationals this week, uh -huh. and I asked him about it, and he said because of the drought they had last year, oh, they were like a lot of people had to send cows up there, and that's why they had these calves running up there. Wow. Well, yeah, certainly. When you're at Steamboat Springs, you run into all kinds of people. We had a great crowd <laughs> on hand, and like you said, uh, the market and the auction, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, even Tuesday afternoon, uh, was really, really great. And now we're looking forward to the Video Royale in Winnemucca, Nevada, and uh, we'll talk more about that auction when we come back. So we're so glad that you're watching us today on Next Stop Auction Block. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Well, Jason, we are going to be hitting the road here pretty quick, the old Winnemucca Road, mm -hmm. and head to Winnemucca, Nevada, fly into Reno, 
drive a short three hours and uh, come, a come on to uh, Winnemucca. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Definitely my favorite sale of the summer. It'll be a fun one. Uh, I think the numbers can be pretty good there. It probably won't be quite as big as Steamboat, but it should be good. It seems like the market's always good at this sale, mm -hmm. especially there at the end of the week. And I don't know how they're going to have it divided out yet as far as what regions will be selling what days, but it's always fun. I uh, said earlier in the show I'm going to get up there Wednesday. Uh, I always enjoy going to the golf tournament yeah. Wednesday night. Then the steak, uh, steak fries Thursday night, and then... Friday kind of winds up the auction. I'll actually be headed home this time on Friday, but oh. definitely going to make it a, a quick trip up there. But it's good to come up there because we do have a lot of seed stock clients that come up there and uh, uh, kind of promote their operations up there. But sure. the one thing about Winnemucca that's the best out of all of our summer sales is they get such a great uh, participation from the consigners. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of buyers up there, but really the consigners, it's just unbelievable how many people come in, especially Thursday night for that steak fry. Yeah, and uh, the, the dinner is awesome, but I have to go back on the, uh, the golf tournament just for a second. I think this is one of the only places when you go to a golf tournament that you're going to see uh, true buckaroos out on the golf course, cowboy hats, boots, spurs, mm -hmm. wranglers, the whole nine yards, but they've got a club in their hand and they're having fun. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's one of those, it's not a huge, huge course, it's not going to take a long time to play through. and. There's so many people out there playing that there's someone on every hole, so you definitely want to be looking over your shoulder a little bit to make sure <laughs> no golf balls are flying your way. Yeah, that's exactly right. And two, I hate to say this, but when when I went last year and when I've been, I you know I'm from California, so I've driven through Elko and Winnemucca quite a few times. But um, going out there, yes, it's high desert. Yes, it's hot, but it's not as hot as here. Do, do you feel like no? That? It's, it's not. I mean, it's, it's like 90, 95, and then it cools off at night and. I mean, I'm just so comfortable up there. I love it. Yeah, and it's it's really dry feeling out there, I guess, to me. But it's it's yeah. fun. Uh, not at the golf tournament. They'll have some mountain oysters, you know, calf fry, yeah. and uh, they'll have a big social event that night as well. But it's definitely one of the sales that you should try to make if you're anywhere close to the area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jim Davis, our, one of our reps, um, he really takes over the whole town of Winnemucca, and you can't go to anything, whether it's the hotel, the restaurant, the casino, anything, where the, the staff is not wearing Superior Livestock shirts and hats, and we absolutely love that, not to mention the Basque restaurants that are there, the Basque food mm -hmm. is to die for. There's a, Ormachias is yeah. the place right outside where the convention center is, where we have the auction. And, and Martins. The, mm -hmm, and it's just, you know, the town's not big enough to where you really have to have a car to get everywhere. You can right. really, from where all the Superior reps stay, you can walk from the hotel to the casino, to where the actual auction is. Yeah. So that, that's always fun. They've got you know great restaurants out there. And then of course Thursday night this year we'll actually have the Bellamy Brothers playing. Yes, I heard that the Bellamy Brothers are gonna be there. And then Waylon Thibodeau, he <laughs> is uh, from Louisiana, great music. There's like four or five bands, but the Bellamy Brothers, I know that they've been there in years past mm -hmm. and we're so glad to have them. Well, back. I'm glad to, glad to have them here because <laughs> I don't know if they've been up there since I've been with Superior, at least not when I made it out to Winnemucca, but I've yeah. definitely seen them in concert a time or two and they're really good. Yeah, well, and I do have to say, uh, my parents are going to be coming up. They're going to be coming in on Wednesday and staying through Friday, and that's always exciting to see them. Since now I live in Texas, they're in California. You know, especially with our summer season, it's hard to get home. So uh, they love coming to Winnemucca. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. But that means early mornings for Pacific time. Mm -hmm. Sunrise is going to be starting at 6 a.m., and the auction starts at 6.30 a.m. Now, so, uh, I've told some of my clients that they get to be your guests on sunrise. Oh, I just oh, haven't told them what time it's going to start well, every let's morning. let's not tell them until we get a little bit closer, but that means I get up at 3.30 those mornings. So I really try and stay on central time. So you don't really ever go to bed from the night before, then? Oh, no. I'm, I, I hit that pillow about 8 o'clock. But, <laughs> but anyway, so let's talk, well, let's talk about... Um, uh, not only Sunrise, but when you're out in Winnemucca, like you said, you have a lot of purebred folks that are out there, so we're going to be being able to visit with a lot of them. We will, and a lot of the ones that come out there are the ones that you're going to see that participate in Superior Progressive Genetics. And you've got such large, large clients out there, and then they buy bulls from their certain seed stock producers. Well, they participate in Progressive Genetics, and then when their customers are marketing those calves with us at Winnemucca, a lot of them have just lot after lot after lot of calves. 
and uh, you'll see the ranch there where they buy their bulls from in the Superior Progressive Genetics Program. Yeah. And a few of those guys that uh, we'll have out there, we'll, we will have as a guest. You will have as a guest yeah. on Sunrise. So. You think Sam Lorenzen will get up early enough to visit with me? Uh, we'll probably better catch him one of the first nights he's there. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you talk about SPG often. We've talked about it on the show a lot. But just kind of give a recap just about what SPG is. It's really the brainchild. You're the brainchild behind it. Well, I don't know if I'd say that, but I get to handle most of it these days. But, you know, it's, it's a value-added program. If you watch our Superior Lifecycle Auctions, you see all these value-added programs at, at the bottom of the screen like uh, Source and Age Verification, VAC 45, Certified Natural. Mm -hmm. And it's just it's another value-added program that the ultimate goal of it is to create a premium for the commercial cattleman when he sells his calves with us. But at the same time, it also allows the seastock producer to, from where he's been buying his bulls from to get some national exposure and some recognition on there as well. Mm -hmm. And it, it also it helps drive these uh, cow-calf producers and our, our people who can sign cattle on Superior to look to Superior, lot, to Superior Productions uh, when it comes to all the CSOC production sales that we broadcast in the spring and the fall. Uh, this last year it actually had a premium, the Superior Progressive Genetics Program had a premium of uh, like $1.84 per hundred weight. So it's definitely, it's uh, bringing in a premium uh, for the commercial cattlemen and it's also letting them realize, hey, if I go out and I buy bulls from these quali qualified ranches, these reputable breeders who are also, uh, for most cases, superior production clients, then I'm going to receive a premium for them for my calves when I sell them. Right. So, and well, it's actually it's it's helped it's helped our purebred sales because we've had so much better participation in those lately mm -hmm. too. Well, and I think too it helps the commercial cattle auction side of things too because a lot of those seed stock operations go back and they buy the calves that are, that are sired by their bulls. Uh, one of the guests that we're going to have on Superior Sunrise out there is going to be Brett DeBrucker and, and he's definitely one of those guys. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just, it's really, it, it's helped strengthen Superior Livestock Auction as a whole. We're really the only, and uh, you know, there's a few other video marketing companies out there, but there's no one that ties everything together as well as Superior Livestock does as far as the commercial cattle side and then the purebred side. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, Having our 7,500 buyer base is uh, the, the yeah it that always too. helps <laughs> yeah 350 reps nationwide uh, but we're not partial to Superior or anything hot huh? no not at all <laughs> all right well when we come back we're going to talk about the American Rancher and uh, it's going into gosh I think it's its eighth season so I know that all of you watch that watch Rural TV have seen Miss Pam Minnick host the American Rancher for years and we're going to talk about the schedule and some upcoming ranches that we're looking forward to seeing so stay stay with us. Well, welcome back, and now we're going to get into the heart and soul of Superior Productions, and a lot of that stems from the American Rancher. It's a TV series that has been on RFD TV for many years, and uh, cowgirl icon Pam Minnick hosts the program, and it's a lot of your clients that uh, you have production sales for. It is. You know, we're just talking about in the last segment before we went to commercial break how Superior Livestock's the, about the only company out there that really ties together the commercial side of the company as far as feeder calves and yearlings with the seed stock side, uh, people who have production sales, Angus and Hereford and all that. And then on top of that, we produce TV shows. And really the main one we're producing right now is the American Rancher and it hits home runs for our clients. Uh, so many of our seed stock producers are using it right now. And when it comes to creating new business and luring in new buyers, this is as good as it comes. And it, it's such a good marketing piece because it gives an overview of the operation. It tells what's coming up. And uh, several of our clients, uh, uh, Express Ranches, 44 Farms, Star Lake Cattle Ranch, I mean, they, they use the American Rancher as a pretty steady marketing tool. So you see them on there quite a few times throughout the year. But, uh, and it's not always CSOC clients. Um, you know, we've had the Bellamy Brothers on there who yeah. we've talked about earlier. We've had uh, Nolan Ryan on there before. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have an episode. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil, that's right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, but I think too, just to talk a little bit more about this, this 30 minute program, it encompasses everything about the operation. So if you're wanting to know more about 44 Farms and instead of just going to their website, you really get to a chance, you get an in-depth look into how they operate and what they focus on and the reason why they're so successful. Or then there's those other ranches that are generational ranches and you get to meet the entire family on the American Rancher and really get an in-depth look into what they offer. 
<laughs> yeah, and it, it's an entertaining show. I mean, yeah. it's good interviews. There's always great scenic footage in there. Joe Walters, the producer of the show, does a really good job on that. Yeah, and two, you film, uh, when you go out to some seed stock operations, you take your HD camera and you get some shots, and I think you shot one that's coming up. Um, I did. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, one of the ones, and it's not going to just solely focus on seed stock operations, although that's going to be a part of it and a tie-in, but one that's always a great show is The Ranching in the High Desert. It's going to be a new show. It's going to be uh, the week of July 16th. And it's uh, going to basically visit families up in Nevada, Oregon area. And uh, these people are mostly going to be selling cattle on Winnemucca. But uh, when I was up there at Brett DeBrucker's a month or two ago, I actually shot some good interviews with Brett and shot some B-roll and, and some uh, footage of, of their operation up there. And of course, they've got like a, a huge feedlot up there on top of having such a great Charlay Seastock operation. Yeah, no, I, I love the American Rancher. And like you said, it's a great... A great marketing tool and who else is coming up give us a quick rundown well just just as far as new shows go express ranches they're gonna air their show of the week of monday july 30th it's going to feature their operation really kind of highlight the big event coming up and highlight not only their huge sea stock sale on saturday but we have that superior livestock auction and express ranches replacement female sale and that sale's open to their customers to superiors customers i mean all they've got to do is have a superior rep to consign them on there they don't have to be straight express genetics however the largest portion of the cell will be express ranch genetics and of course it's a replacement female cell so for people that are looking for uh females to buy right before a big bull sale season and you know kind of coming off summer this is a good time to go look yeah absolutely i love going up to yukon mm -hmm. and uh another one that we've got coming up will be 44 farms there at cameron texas and they're they'll actually their first show is going to air uh the week of august 27th uh great great angus operation located in central texas like i said cameron so they're not too far from austin or from waco okay. Uh, not what too about far from the Netflix. Red Angus Association of America. Love mm -hmm. everyone at Red Angus, Jennifer Noble. Well, it seems Jennifer like we're Barry. always shooting new footage for the Red Angus yeah. Association everywhere we go. And, uh, you know, I, I know we shot stuff when we we're out at Florida at the Cattlemen's Convention out there. And uh, it seems like uh, Joel did a special shoot out there not too long ago, too. So, yeah. uh, always drawing up footage. We'll shoot some more stuff at Winnemucca. But yeah. uh, they'll have a good show coming up. And that's going to be uh, the week of August 13th. The Red Angus. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, for those of you that don't know, you can always go to the AmericanRancher.com and see what shows are coming up and, and uh, when they air. And actually, every uh, show on the American Rancher, like Katie said, is 30 minutes long, but it premieres on Monday nights. Uh, it's either at 8 or 9 o'clock. I believe it's, it's, uh, it's 8 Central. It's 8 Central. Yeah. And then it airs again uh, Tuesday, and I believe it's about 11 Central, mm -hmm. 10 or 11 Central. It's in the morning. And then it airs one more time on Sunday, and it's at 11 Central, noon Eastern. Yeah, right. And then also on the AmericanRancher.com website, you can see the full episodes mm -hmm. of everything uh, that we've aired. So if you happen to miss it on RFD, if you just run over to the website, uh, the full show, the full show is certainly there. What do we have? Anything exciting for September before we run the break? We do. Well, actually, the last week of September, the week of September 24th, we'll have Ari Brown Ranch again. You know, they were first time clients this last fall. Uh, been in the cattle business for a long, long time, have great sales, and they sell Red Angus cattle and Angus and some Sim Angus, and, and uh, they've got another breed that they've kind of put together themselves as a composite, but they've got such a great sale, and they're first-time clients last year, and they really got along well with Superior. Oh, that's great. So we'll have them. It's a historic ranch, so it'll be a good one. And uh, then the Superior Family Horse Auction. We'll mm -hmm. lastly uh, talk about that just because uh, that – the next horse auction we're going to have is Saturday, uh, November 3rd at noon central on mm -hmm. RFD TV. And if all of you were on hand for our May auction, uh, we had 30 really, really, really great um, horses that were true top quality true. horses, ranch horses, kids horses. It was awesome. Kelly Keller in our Superior Productions office, she's in charge of that. And I know that she now is accepting consignments for the November 3rd auction. So if any of you folks at home have a horse that you'd like to consign with us, We'd certainly love to ha love to have you and love to help you. And you can call us at 800-431-4452 and visit with Kelly uh, in our productions office to see if there was something that, or is, is something that we could work out for you. But uh, we're going to have a show on uh, the Superior Family Horse Auction the week of, of October 22nd. And just to touch, we've got two more CSOC clients coming up. Well, one we've already discussed, 44 Farms will have another segment coming up on October 15th. Mm -hmm. But Star Lake Herford's up there at Scottsdale, Oklahoma will have a big full segment coming up on October 8th. Great. Well, we love that. We sure love all of our seed stock operations. 
and all, all of our commercial cattle consigners and buyers. And we're just so thankful that you uh, that Superior Livestock Auction uh, is your avenue for marketing your cattle because we. Uh, I think what Mr. Odell always says is that we market cattle for people to people, mm -hmm. and uh, since 1987, that's been uh, the overall goal here at the company, and I think we all strive to strive to do that. We do, in and every aspect. you know, uh, Superior markets itself with trust and integrity, and mm -hmm. and always try to do the right thing, and we try to put our customers and our clients first. Yeah, and I think we do a pretty mm -hmm. good job at it, if I do say so myself. When we come back, where are we headed next? Uh, we're going to talk more about uh, the purebred division. Are you ready for that? Ready, for some, hard, ready for some hard <laughs> questions? Mm -hmm. All right, uh, don't go anywhere. Auction Block will be right back. <laughs> Well, now that we've really talked about the American Rancher and everything that it encompasses from a marketing standpoint for our seed stock operations, uh, not every seed stock operation is required to have an American Rancher in their package no. or what have you, but you do have a schedule for the upcoming fall. I know it will probably change a little bit. It will. I uh, just got back and I'm starting to work on that. And of course, I've been on the road so much that I've got notes everywhere. I've really got to go through emails and, yeah. and try to put it together. But right now I've got a schedule just from what we had last year and what's kind of tentative. It'll definitely be different next week. In fact, we'll be sending it into RFD here right after, right after this week. But uh, once we get that done, I'm sure we'll talk about it a lot more on the show. So if you're a client of ours this fall and I missed you on here, I apologize in advance, but I will have you on the next one. Don't hold it to it. You know who watches this is Jim Felton, so don't screw right. that up. Okay, I'll try not to. <laughs> Uh, but the, the first one, and we've, we've hit on it already, is Express Big Event, and it's going to be Friday, August 24th, and Saturday, August 25th. And on Friday, it's going to be the Express Ranches and Superior Livestock Auction Commercial Replacement Female Sale. And I know, you know, here on our last Superior Livestock Auction sale catalog, we actually have them on the inside cover. But it's basically going to be uh, replacement females. It's going to be open to uh, not just Express customers, but anybody who is affiliated with Superior Livestock Auction. You just have to have a Superior rep to consign cattle on these. Yeah. And of course, Kevin Hefter, Gerald Callahan at Express are also Superior reps. But uh, that one will be on Friday. I believe it's going to start at noon, and it's going to have a, a big, big dose of Express influenced females on it. Uh, then on we've, had, we've had Kevin on here just not that long ago mm -hmm. talking about That's Express. right, when we I, have. When I interviewed Mr. Funk up in Calgary, I, uh, I told him that uh, we had Kevin on and we talked all things Express for a mm -hmm. full for a full hour. So. Well, Kevin's supposed to be joining me, him or Gerald Callahan, and one are supposed to be coming up to Winnemucca. Oh, Still great. trying to get everything set, so hopefully we'll have them up and maybe have them as a guest on, okay. on Sunrise too. But uh, on that Saturday, Express will have their big event, their main female sale. It's going to be a lot of registered females, and it'll be an all-day event. I mean, last year, I think it went from whatever time they started, which was in the morning at some point, until like 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a long sale. This year, they're actually going to sell some of those uh, registered females right after the the commercial female sale, the oh, replacement okay. female sale, to get some of those out of the way on Friday. Yeah. Well, I love, like I said, I like going up to Yukon. Hopefully, that, hopefully you uh, will have me up there again to help in some capacity, because on the way home, I like hitting that Windstar Casino just mm -hmm. a little bit to play a little bit of blackjack. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> I even stopped in there. I'm not very good at it, but well, you know that you saw me play in Winnemac. I'm not very good, but I sure like to. Have hey, fun. as long as you like and to have I'm, fun. And I'm pretty tight too, so once I hit like if I get if I lose like 40 bucks or 30 bucks, I'm like I'm out of here. <laughs> anyway, next, next sale. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, we're gonna have Nunley Brothers, uh, Santa Gertrudis, uh commercial replacement female sale. It's going to be down at Sabinal, Texas. Jim Coleman, who's a superior rep and sells a lot of cattle on Superior, uh, helps with this sale. So he's also a rep for those guys, but uh, it'll be a good one. It'll be on RFD. Um, it's going to be Friday, September 14th, which is also my birthday. Oh, well, happy. We'll have to remember Thanks. that. Thanks. I'm, I'm turning 30, so oh I'm getting Oh, my <laughs> gosh. You are. It's all downhill from here. Uh, that's what I mean. <laughs> well, I'm, how about this? I'm turning 27 this year, and um, I'm starting to tell people, I'm like, this is what happens. When you turn 27, people are going to start going, oh, when someone goes, oh, how old's Katie? They're going to go, eh, it's what's, like what's this 30. saying on your belt buckle? Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah, bless your heart is right. But that's when they're going to start saying, oh, Katie, yeah, she's like around 30. I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> well, I'm actually going to be 30, so believe me. How about that? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, we'll have that sell. And actually, it's not on here yet. But one that I know that's going to be on there is uh, it's going to be the Perk Ranch sale. Uh, so Bree, who works yeah. here in her office, it's it's gonna be her husband's family. Yeah, so, 
Um, mm-hmm. That's so, great. You finally got them roped in, huh? Well, this is going to be the, like their first production, so kind of their standalone one. They okay. they were involved with the production cell we had last fall with okay. Langford Herefords. Uh, and anyway, we're going to have the Langford cell again, but the Perks one's going to be up in Illinois, where, where they're from. Okay. So love that family. Uh-huh. They're wonderful people. And I don't exactly have it on this schedule yet, but it's going to be there, like I said, when I get through there. All right. So Who's just that? just skipping through uh, Hoffman Top W4 Annual Female Cell, uh, Thedford, Nebraska. I saw Jason Hoffman this last week at her for Junior Nationals. Visited with him, but it'll be be an internet cell like the Perks one, but right. it, it'll be in Thedford, and it'll be the end of September. I don't have the updated date on here yet. Like I said, we're still working on that. And when you say uh, internet option, if you log on to superiorclicktobid.com, or even superiorlivestock.com, you can go to the right spot to view the auction. Uh, like Jason said, mm-hmm. it's all online and it's all click to bid. Um, you can phone in as well, but sure, you, watch the, you watch the entire auction online. It's, it's just like the regular RFD auctions because we videotape the cattle normally uh, three to four weeks in advance. So when you're watching the auction, you're seeing that edited footage. Uh, you still hear the auctioneer like any other sell. Right. And, and like you said, you can bid online or you can call in. Yeah. So uh, moving on to that one, here's one that I saw come across my phone last week while I was at Herford Junior <laughs> Nationals. Uh, a customer that's been with us for a few years, they're actually going to have a sale in Dos Palos, California. Yeah, Dos, Dos Palos. Palos. Yeah, however you say that. Hey, You're a native really, Californian. Yeah, so. that's only a couple, an hour mm-hmm. or an hour and a half or so from, from uh, our ranch. Really? Well, yeah. it'll be Eagle Pass Ranch. Okay. They actually have a bull sale every spring with us in Highmore, South Dakota. Yeah. Uh, they have a female sale with us uh, um, in December on some years when they sell a bunch of females there. But but so we'll have them, have that sale in California for the first time. If you need help out there, just let me know. I'll okay, we may just send you out there to take care of it. Yeah, okay. Um, then keep going through. Uh, we're going to have the Express's bull sell there at the first part of October. I believe it's going to be October 1st. Okay. It'll be on RFD. Um, look here we'll have a so McKellar Angus will be on there. We're going to have Powell Herefords. Uh, R.A. Brown Ranch is going to be, uh, I believe, that second Wednesday. Well, no, it's. I'm gonna have to go through there, there and look at it. Yeah, I, I, I think it actually it should be it should be the second Wednesday in October. It'll be uh, pretty much all day. It'll be a big sale. Yeah, great. Ari Brown, such a reputable reputable outfit in they the are. entire cattle industry. That in, that entire. They are, and is. Donald Brown will be there at Winnemuc promoting the oh, ranch. Great. So, so that, oh, that'll be good. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Thomas Charley Ranch uh, down in South Texas. This of course, Mitch Thomas was my older brother's roommate at A and M. So oh, always enjoy going yeah. down there. Uh, we're not sure if that one's going to be on. RFD or online yet. Uh, okay. This year how the FFA conventions actually back a week it seems like on on RFD they might actually be on RFD this oh, okay. time where normally they don't have that option. Yeah. Um, and then keep going we'll actually have Star Lake sell and they're moving their sell from the third Sunday in uh, October to the third Saturday and it's going to be on RFD and, and the, really one of the huge reasons they moved it from Sunday to Saturday was so they could get on RFD. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we'll have the Langford Hereford sale. It'll be that Sunday. It'll be just the next day, and they're just down the road in Oklahoma. Well, it sounds like uh, Superior Productions is going to be very busy mm-hmm. here coming up uh, pretty quick. Yep, and really the last sale that I want to hit on right now is 44 Farms, their prom cut bull sale. They're doing a lot with us on their American Rancher. They're advertising hard with us. So uh, their sale is really going to be about one of the last ones we have in October. Yep, right there in Cameron, Texas. Great outfit. I have to tell you, Pam Minnick went down there not that long ago, maybe a few that, weeks Yeah, ago. they actually had her on site to, yeah. to host her, right? Yeah, yeah, so she was on site, and she, she's traveled to a lot of really great operations and ranches across the country, but she, when she was driving back, she called me, and she said that is one of the most first-class operations that she's ever seen. Yeah, it really is. It's a beautiful place. Yeah. I always love going down there, and it's close. Yeah, it is good. Well, when we come back from this commercial break, we're going to talk about where we're headed here in the next few weeks, so stay with us. Well, welcome back to Next Stop Auction Block. Jason's been running through our purebred auction schedule that we have tentatively set for this coming fall. Uh, new customers, a lot of returning customers, and I think uh, before too long, I'm going to be jumping on an airplane, and you are too. And are you headed anywhere fun lately? Other than Winnemucca, you know, that's that's really yeah. about the last place I'm going to fly. Like I said, I've I'd been in and out of an airport for six weeks straight, and then finally for the seventh week, drove to Nebraska, which. Yeah. Was, you know, definitely a drive, but, uh, yeah. but you go to Winnemucca, but that's really the, the next place that I've got scheduled to fly out somewhere. Really, uh, 
now that we're going to be through the end of July, August is really when I start setting everything up for uh, all of our fall sales and get out there and visit some clients. And uh, you know, I normally go to uh, Texas A&M's Beef Cattle Short Course there in August, but uh, really that's about it. It's time to start focusing on my clients and making sure that I've got all the details and everything lined up to have uh, cattle videotaped and then their sales to go off without a hitch. So I'll start staying around here a little more and I'm sure, but you're going to be traveling quite a bit yeah, still. Yeah, like I said, I've never been to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, I'm going to be traveling there next week with Pam. Uh, Pretty exciting. We're going to be uh, uh, at Jackson Fork Ranch and the Jackson Fork Lodge and Jackson Hole to really focus in on their outfit and their operation. Not only do they have a, a draft horse uh, division, they have a full six horse hitch of Percheron mares, which are so beautiful. I, I had the opportunity to watch them at the World Championship in Calgary just last week. Uh, very impressive. But also, they have a huge bison outfit. And so we're gonna, Pam and I are gonna be up there uh, taping all the bison and really just taking in uh, the beautiful scenery. And uh, I'm just thankful to be a part of it. Good, maybe I'm gonna have some bison hamburgers yeah, while you're up there. Yeah, maybe so. I don't, I don't know, working for <laughs> Superior, we're all the way to beef. But um, I will tell you, just a side note about Calgary. I'd never been to Canada before, so this was my first time. And, um, I uh, had a little bit of a problem going through customs. Uh, they really gave me 21 questions. Uh, you must have looked death. suspicious. I don't know, I guess so. You should have just said A. I, <laughs> I had my cowboy hat on. I thought everything was going just fine. She asked me a zillion questions and I, I hate to say it, but you know, they ask like the most simplistic questions, okay? But then like when you try to Did you to not like them, fill out the form on the airplane no, on the way totally, out? totally did all of that, okay? But you know, when they ask you such simple questions, you kind of get tongue-tied because it's like, are they trying to trick you? Or are they not? Like, what? And so I think I got a little like fumbled up on answering my questions. And so this lady, like without smiling or anything, she goes, you need to go to immigration. I'm like, oh my God. So the other folks that I was traveling with, they went right on through. Well, I had to go stand in line at immigration for an hour. And I'm standing there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to get through to Canada. I'm not going to be able to go to the Calgary stand. But, you know, I'm just having all these things running through my mind. Yeah. Well, long story short, they asked me more questions and more questions and more questions. And finally, after an hour and a half, um, they let me go through. Thank God. Uh, and then, you know, had a great time at Calgary. Well, then leaving... I, uh, leaving uh, Calgary, I had a problem going through customs again, and uh, they were, she, the lady that was helping me was actually pretty short with me, and I was just like, I gotta get out of here, I need to get back to America, but. Well, um, I've got a good funny story okay. for you from customs. Okay. Uh, right after my twin brother and I graduated college, we went on a big cruise down to Mexico mm -hmm. on uh, Carnival Cruise Lines with a, yeah. a ton of friends from college and from growing up. And coming back through customs on the way back through, I'm right in front of my twin brother. And uh, they ask me, where were you born? And I said, Amarillo, Texas. And of course, they by this point realized we're twins and looked at both their IDs. And he wasn't paying attention. And they said, and where were you born? He said, Channing, Texas. What they do? They're like, uh, so y'all are twins and y'all weren't born in the same place. Oh my gosh, I know, they're so, they're so tough. But uh, anyway, then they started laughing. They said, go on through. But. Okay, well this is, I just have, I'm gonna tell you this story because I was trying to be helpful and you know, I talk a lot and you know, I'm always like happy. And so I wanted to be happy to this lady because I thought, surely I'm not gonna have problems getting back. You know, I just wanted to get home, you know. So I go up there, well, I, um, I thought that I was gonna fly out on Sunday morning with the other reporter, okay? So it was, uh, we had to get on the shuttle at 5 a.m. on Sunday morning and get to the airport, you know, and get all checked in. Our flight left at 7 a.m. Well, the other reporter, her flight, her flight number, her flight time departure, the gate, everything was identical to mine. So I didn't even really think to really review all my stuff. Well, she flew out on Sunday. I didn't fly out until Monday. So I get there Sunday and I'm all, you know, prepped and ready to go home and the lady at the counter goes, ma'am, you don't fly out till tomorrow. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? So she goes, I can put you on standby, but it's not looking good. And I said, okay. So I go through and that's when I went through customs, they stamped my passport, checked me out the whole nine yards, didn't get on the, the plane when the other reporter left. They said, you can stay and wait. There's only one other direct flight. It's out at two. There's one seat open. It's a 50-50 chance. And I thought, huh. Well, I'm gonna go have one more day at the rodeo. Chet was riding again, so yeah. I thought, oh gosh, I'll just go back to the rodeo. So I go back Monday morning, my specific time and everything was right. I go up to customs and this is what happens. So me being helpful, I said, uh, ma'am, before she could really talk, and so I probably should have let her ask me the questions first, but I just started talking because mm -hmm. that's kind of how I am. Uh, so I said, well, ma'am, I said, uh, yesterday 
I came here. You all already checked off. You know, you already stamped my book. I've tried to fly out on standby. I didn't make it out. So I just wanted to let you know, here's my standby boarding pass that I didn't get out on. This is why my passport is stamped. Here is my ticket for today. She looks at me straight face. She goes, do you work for the airline? And I go, oh, no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here visiting. And she goes, then let me ask the questions. No kidding. I swear. And I'm standing there. I have my cowboy hat on. I've been up since 4.30 and I'm like, I need to get back to America like right now. It's probably but that anyway, cowboy hat. I don't know what it was, but man, she was tough. But all in all, the trip to Calgary was just, uh, it was totally awesome. I would suggest anyone that has not been or that has the opportunity to go, it is a must see. Yeah, so I've actually never been up there. Yeah, incredible. And what's cool is that when you fly into Calgary, it's all plains. Like I thought it would be a little more mountainy, you know, a rolling plain, mm -hmm. totally flat plains. And then you drive into Calgary and it's like you're seeing the Wizard of Oz, right? It's like nothing. And then all of a sudden it's just like downtown Dallas, just skyscrapers <laughs> everywhere. And then the rodeo is in the middle of downtown. Like, sounds awesome. When you're in the rodeo arena, you can see all the skyscrapers. It's just crazy. But anyway, it was totally awesome. I'm glad that you're going to be able to stick around. I bet your dog Grover and, and Jackie like you uh, being home a little bit more. Yeah, they're they're <laughs> definitely ready for me to come home for a little while. Yeah. But, you know, Jackie and uh, her family was up at Steamboat with us all week. Oh, so yeah. I got to see her some there. Of course, she took a vacation. And we get back home Saturday after it's over. She's like, you know, I really didn't get to see you at all on vacation. And I said, I told you not to take vacation that week because... This, you know, 10 to 12 hour days every right. day was superior there. Right, yeah. So uh, Jackson Hole, then Winnemucca, then we're going to be home for a little while, and then mm -hmm. off to Sheridan, Wyoming to see those great polo matches and have an auction too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, well, when we come back, we will wrap up the show, and we want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Well, welcome back to Next Stop Auction Block. And Jason, I want to talk just a little bit more. Uh, I know that you were just at the Hereford Junior Nationals. Talk, kind of talk about the show schedule that, that you have and, and where you can see some of your customers. Well, uh, that show is really uh, about a week long normally. Uh, I got up there on Wednesday, which is also the 4th of July. So they had a great, great fireworks show up there where we're at. Like I said, it's the same place where RFD is going to be broadcasting the Nebraska State Fair. So it's in Grand Island, but... I got up there Wednesday, Thursday it seemed like was showmanship day, uh, Friday was bread and own show day, I mean they take all day, and then Saturday and Sunday was the own heifer show, and normally it's all a day ahead, so normally you finish on Saturday and you've got all day Sunday to get home. Mm -hmm. Well this year the show you know, didn't end until after 3 o'clock on Sunday, oh, and it was wow. a 10 and a half hour drive, so got back very, very late Sunday night. Yeah. But. Uh, uh, it's just it's such a great time to go up there and visit with families and with friends and people that I've grown up with and have shown cattle for a long time and it's it's all about juniors so you know it's it's youth once they turn 21 they're too old to show um, but it's so much fun I've really enjoyed seeing my nephew and my niece show up there and they always do a great job uh, but you know just just the camaraderie and visiting with people and like I said it's it's all about youth so it's always a great time yeah yeah what uh, what shows next. Or where do you all head next? Well, we normally show cattle in the fall um, in Kansas City and Louisville and then Denver and Fort Worth. But as far as the junior show, this is this is really kind of it. And another thing that's, that's fun about it is they travel to different locations. So it's, it won't be in Grand Island next year. I believe it's actually going to be back in Kansas City, Missouri next year. But uh, And a lot of these families, I mean, this is their vacation for the summer. You know, they go up there for the entire week. Of course, my uh, twin brother, my older brother, had been up there all week, and by the time I got there, they'd been there for a few days, and yeah. I know by Sunday, they were definitely ready to come yeah. home. But. <laughs> well, and your brother's engaged? Just he did. Engaged. He just got engaged a few a few weeks ago, and uh, the girl he's engaged to is a great lady, and uh, she was up there, and her younger brother was actually showing a Barbara Herford up there. Oh, we really like that. Mm -hmm, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, I don't have any other uh, new and exciting news. I just feel like you said earlier, just been living out of a suitcase. But yeah. um, Well, one thing I wanted to ask you, I'm okay. sorry for cutting you off, but <laughs> out of the Steamboat last week, I saw that you uh, sold some belt buckles to Rusty Day Cordova, one of our, our best peer reps, yeah, his, wife. his wife, Debbie Bob. Uh -huh. yeah. So tell us about how the belt buckle <laughs> business is going. Well, some of the superior reps, um, quite a few of them are actually buying them for some of their wives, daughters, and granddaughters, but it's all going really, really well. Um, it was really humbling because I didn't have a chance. We were so busy at the auction, I didn't have a chance to go in town um, into Steamboat. But the Western store that's there, um, I got all kinds of pictures. And I was getting all these texts from people. They had my buckles in the front window of the display oh, awesome. case. So 
I didn't know was, that. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. Um, it was very surprising. And like I said, you know, ML Letty's down here in the stockyards has the full line. Maverick Western Wear across the street has, has them also. Um, we just finalized our full page ad for Cowboys and Indians, the magazine. So um, it's going to be in the October issue. Uh, which is fall fashion and it actually comes out uh, around August 15th. So if any of you are uh, Cowboys and Indians diehard fans or I love, I personally love the magazine. I'm sure Jackie does too, but it is all things Western. Uh, we're going to be a uh, full page ad in, in October and hopefully uh, those, uh, the buckles will sell and people will like yeah. them. Sounds like y'all are rocking right along. I then. know. I, th I think so. Like I told you from the beginning, it's just been such a whirlwind because uh, the the company approached me in April and they said design something so I did and I thought oh gosh this is never going to take off and now you know a few months later I have eight or nine buckles and Ad and Cowboys mm -hmm. and Indians and Western stores are starting to pick them up so uh, they're really reasonable you know they're all handcrafted right there in Denver uh, Colorado and it's all with uh, you know gemstones turquoise and coral black onyx um, and the retail price, they're actually really, really good. So, good. Um, well, really which useful. which one's the favorite one you've designed? Now I've seen pictures of them. Yeah. Oh, that's so hard because I really, um, I really do love all of them. But um, probably the Thunderbird, I call it the Thunder Spirit. That's probably my favorite. It has a beautiful silver Thunderbird on it with coral in his in, in its wings. And then um, we actually have a Navajo Indian that works for the company, and so he's done all the sand art on the belt buckle and um, the detail and everything is truly breathtaking but then Great. i have a bless your i you know i have a bless your heart buckle i have a flower i have a cross uh, they're, they're all i don't know I don't well know. at some point we're <laughs> actually gonna have katie bring some buckles onto the show no, because mr Edel will start charging me for the segment, <laughs> so we can't we can't do that we now. just found a sponsor for the show folks yeah i'm just kidding well mr Edel, you know so i had him in steamboat and you know he watches so he'll he'll chuckle at this but uh he saw me carrying my belt buckles around and you know i'm parading them around and having people look at them and buy them or what have you. And he comes without missing a beat. You know, he jokes all the time and he goes, well, how much, how much of, how much of a cut is superior going to get for you selling these belt <laughs> buckles at the auction? And I looked at him and go, Miss Rodel, you don't get anything. You don't get anything. And oh, he just, you know, he chuckled and then kept walking, but it's been a lot of fun. The support that everyone's given um, is really, really humbling. So Good. I hope they work out. I hope Jackie wants one. I'm sure she will. I'm sure it'll work out. <laughs> all right. Well, folks, we want to thank all of you so much for uh, joining us this week on Next Stop Auction Block. And the next time you'll see us, we'll either be live or be taping from Winnemucca. Yeah, or... we'll probably shoot one of these while I'm out yeah, there. Yeah. So uh, the next time you'll see us, we'll be up in the high desert of beautiful Winnemucca, Nevada. We want to thank you again for watching us, and we will see you right back here this time next week. Thanks, and see you next time.